Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of the Interstellar Modeler. What I plan to do in the next couple videos here is now detail the building of this model kit of the USS Enterprise C. This of course is from the Next Generation episode, Yesterday's Enterprise. I decided to take a break from the Galactica universe and as I was looking for another uh, model to build, I found this one on my shelf that's been sitting up there for quite some time and decided to give it another shot. Now the main challenge of this model kit is not going to be lighting because I actually don't plan to light it. It's going to be painting and as you can see here uh, it involves these circular patterns that you see that certainly deviate from the usual uh, paint schemes that we see with most Federation ships. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you how I would do that. So for the colors what I decided to do was to use Tamiya's sky blue mixed with Tamiya's white and a little bit of gray here. This is a neutral gray color to create what I think will work well for the dark and light panels. So real quickly here, I wanted to share with you guys something that I'm going to be using as a reference. This is a book I found many years ago called Star Trek Mechanics. Um, it's all in Japanese, so you can't read it, but uh, I tell you, when you open it up, you can see pictures from every Star Trek ship you can imagine here from the Star Trek universe, uh, including Voyager, the Enterprise E, and of course, the Enterprise C. Unfortunately, you can't really find this book as easily anymore. You can certainly find copies on eBay, uh, and it will run you up to about almost $100 to get a copy. But if you can, it's really just a great reference to any of the Star Trek ships that you can imagine building. So this is actually the second attempt at building this kit. Uh, the first attempt was a, a kit that I had in my collection for some time, and eventually I decided I didn't like the colors that I chose for it, so I sold it and bought another one, and that's what you see here. The model is partially assembled here with the secondary hull already pieced together and the model itself has been painted with a duck egg blue, that's a color from testers. And um, I decided now to deviate from this uh, color because after doing a little bit more research online I found out that the kit was most likely painted a light gray color along with those bluish tones. So that's what I'm going to do first is repaint this light gray and uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so here we have the uh, pieces now repainted in the light gray color. You're not going to be able to tell in this lighting, but they have been repainted. And now we're going to begin with masking off uh, the model so that we can get these circular patterns. So how would we go about doing that? Well, um, obviously we're going to use masking tape. Um, and you can take masking tape and try to uh, uh, bend it around the edge uh, along the saucer. Um, and that could potentially work. Uh, but one easier way to do that is to take the masking tape and to cut it into circular, uh, into a curved pattern. So how do you do that? Well, uh, the way I do it is with the use of these, they're called French Curve Templates. And this is something you can get at um, an art store. Aaron Brothers carries them. And uh, they're essentially templates that are used for drawing and other things so that um, you can easily obtain curves. And uh, these can be very useful in cutting out pieces of masking tape in a curved pattern. So let me just show you real quickly how that works. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is lay down a piece of masking tape on a flat surface. Then you want to have a sharp X-Acto knife uh, ready for you to use. Um, this is a conventional X-Acto knife here. Uh, they do sell X-Acto knives with a swiveling head. This is supposed to be made for curved uh, areas or tight corners. Um, you can get this at a hobby store as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use this one to show you how simple it is to do uh, just with a conventional X-Acto knife. All right, so there are three templates available that uh, came in this set here. And um, these other ones are for, uh, you know, whichever one you use is going to depend on how curved the uh, cut needs to be. So um, I'm going to use this larger template here. And essentially what you do now is you take the template and you try to match the radius of curvature that you need to cut uh, uh, along with the template here and the model. And uh, so it looks like it pretty much uh, would match uh, this part of the curve here, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and lay it down like so. And let's go ahead and make the cut here with the X-Acto knife. Okay, so uh, once that is done, you lift it off, and you can see here now you have a curved pattern. So the advantage of doing this is that if you were to take, say, a, um, a straight-edged piece of masking tape and try to force it along this curve, what you'll end up with are wrinkles that unfortunately will allow paint to bleed through, and then when you lift off the masking tape, it won't look very good. Okay, so the other advantage is that you also not only get this curve here, but you also are left with this piece as well, which can be used on um, the inner curves that we're going to need to uh, mask off uh, on this surface as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead now and proceed with this and mask everything off and then paint it and then I'll show you the result uh, when I'm done. 
All right, so I thought I'd take a second just to show you here the masked off sections. This, of course, is the lower part of the saucer, and here's the upper section here. And uh, you can see now, using the template, how we're able to get a nice circular pattern. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply the first coat here and move on from there. And as we're moving right along here, uh, the uh, uh, light blue coat has been applied. Now I'm going to apply the darker tones here. And as you can see, there's really no easy way around this. You just have to take the time to mask all these areas off. And it's making me remember why this model has been sitting on a shelf for so long, because I really didn't look forward to uh, doing this sort of thing. But uh, nonetheless, you can just power through it and um, um, you know make your way through uh, masking all this off so that you can get all the patterns down. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this one now. And I have also have the um, horizontal lines now masked off here in, on the secondary hull, uh, which we painted the same tone as uh, this section here. All right, guys, so just uh, showing you how things are coming along here. Uh, the rings have been painted here along the um, uh, bottom section of the saucer. Uh, you can see now the circular patterns have been put into place here, uh, along with this lining here and uh, the bridge area, all that's been painted. And uh, you can see now the grid pattern is also here on the secondary hull. And I've gone along and painted um, uh, these areas here. Now, one thing I did want to point out here is, uh, you know, this is one of those products that I've seen hanging in the model shop uh, for many years, and I just kind of walked by them. Uh, but I uh, decided to get some this time around because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of masking. And uh, so that's this uh, Tamiya masking tape. Um, I bought both a 6mm and 10mm uh, size here. And I can tell you, they definitely help out with these type of uh, detailing and um, I'm, about, I'm about to paint this section right here and what makes it easier to work with than just regular masking tape is that it's much thinner uh, and it's easier to cut through with your exacto knife uh, because I've uh, as I've said I've done this model previously and uh, I just use regular masking tape I figure you know why spend the money and buy these little uh, rolls here but in fact it is helpful to have that for this type of detailing. I wouldn't mask an entire model with it because it's not that cheap, but on the other hand, when it comes to um, doing this, this type of detailing, as well as what you see here, I was able to take advantage of the grooves that you see here and simply place the masking tape over them and cut out the areas that I needed painted quite easily. Um, with regular masking tape, you'd have to apply more pressure and it didn't always cut out uh, quite cleanly. So, um, so yeah, I would recommend if you're going to be doing some masking and stuff uh, to at least have uh, some rolls, uh, different sizes here um, on your workbench because they are helpful to have. So um, the next step now would be to paint these here and to work further on the nacelles because there are some striping and uh, other types of patterns that I need to paint here, uh, as well as some detailing here on the secondary hull. Uh, if there's one word I'd use to describe this model, it probably would be tedious, not to discourage you from ever building this one, but uh, you can see there's just a lot of masking and painting involved, and uh, even if it comes to painting a room or inside, a, inside your house, it's uh, one of the things I hate doing is masking, because it just takes forever. But once it's done and you remove everything, everything just comes out perfect here um, and uh, to your liking, hopefully. Um, so it's it's worthwhile putting the effort in, but uh, it's always one of those things I don't look forward to doing. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here for now, and uh, I'll pick up uh, with another video here as we get closer to constructing and putting everything else together. All right, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it as always.